Yellow clip blocking in the house in my road. Gotta make it put it on. She don't like wearing clothes. Just left Concord, no Carolina. I was licking on booty in the whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream. She remember you. Ice cube make a change. Ever like the way do. Do see me with the crew. I done get some food. I see you looking like a dude. Had to make a move, make a move. Snade Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador. With another Rikers Island story exclusive interview, man. We've been working on this for like for like a good month, man. Let the people know who you are, man. Who we got right now? Yo, what's cracking? What's cracking, my boy? You talking to Psycho Finesse, aka Psycho Lope. Psycho Lope, my street name, and Psycho Finesse, my music name. We want the people to know right now where they can find you. So go ahead and plug in whatever music you got and plug in all your socials right now before we even get to it. All right, Facebook. First on Facebook, you can find me on Facebook at UG Smith. That's U G S M Y T H. Smith with a Y, not an I. That's my own Facebook. My Instagram, you can find me at Psycho Finesse Official. Let's start at the beginning, man. As far back as we could go, and we're gonna bring it to present to the present day. All right, so you are a self-proclaimed and not scared the jacket, and you standing on it. You are a crit. Now, where are you from? I'm originally from New York, Coney Island, slash Crown Inch. I Born and raised in Coney Island, but I, I did some of my own living in Crown Heights as well. Well, I'm really all over, so you can really say I'm really all over, but well, I was born at Coney Island, so yeah. You turned crit when you was how old? All right, well, to be exact, I was already throwing them crit at the age of 13, and under 13, but I ain't officially come home from until I was exactly 16 due to the fact I was around real thorough OGs to where there was some hell nah, nigga, you ain't about to be crip at the age of 13, take your ass to school. Which is what real OGs is supposed to do, by the way, keep going. Yeah, that's a fact, you gotta remember, this is back in the day, so Crippin was real, well, it was some bullshit, but it was real compared to how it is now, that's basically what I'm saying, so yeah. It was still some bullshit, but not like how it is right now. What was it like for you growing up in Brooklyn as a young kid? You know what I'm saying? On what? what if you don't want to give too much detail, you don't have to. But what was it like in the house? What was it like in the house? Like growing up for you? Like how did you end up? You know, taking a liking to the streets. Um, do you get along with both your parents? Like, if you could give us some insight on that. All right, well, first off, I'm going to give it to you real. I'm going to be myself. If I can't be myself, then you don't need for me to be up here. Uh -huh. I tell my people the same thing when I go into the studio and record music. But to answer your question, while I was growing up in New York, Brooklyn, shit was rough. You know, I come from the project hard in New York type days where like, it was hard for me growing up in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't have it. Gold just form and under that. You know what I'm saying? It was more, you had to go out there and get it if you wanted it. And I was really forced into the streets if you think about it, because after my mom died, just to clear that my mom passed away when I was six from a heart attack, my pops, like I said in the last interview, he lost his mind due to, he was fucked up mentally off of the strength of my mom, you get what I'm saying? So he couldn't raise us, couldn't take care of us and none of that, so that caused him to put us to go into the system. Okay. But also don't know what that is, that's basically ACS, foster care group homes and stuff like that. I'm already traumatized due to the fact, like, damn, I really just lost my goddamn mom. Now, of course, at the age of six, I really don't understand death, but I do realize that she's not here. So, you know, I end up going to stay with my aunt, which is my mom's sister. I'm going from house to house. I ain't really never really had a stable house in the net. You get what I'm saying? So, I was really bouncing around from house to house until I got to the age where my family really couldn't deal with me no more till they let me go into the system. The first time I went to the system was, I pray say 10, that was the first group home I went into, and I've been in the group home ever since up until adult age. Okay. While I was in those group homes, that's when I started wilding this shit, because the way I looked at it at the time, like, damn, I don't even listen to my goddamn family, so what makes you think I'm becoming the goddamn group home and listen to y'all, because I don't even know y'all. So that was my attitude being in the group home at the time, you feel me, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand, you know, I got I got a lot of family who they've been in the system and, you know, it'd be like people, grandmothers and stuff who try to, like, keep the kids in the family. But sometimes, sometimes you don't have the right family or sometimes your family 
they don't know the right way to love you. So instead, they'll just give you up. You know what I'm saying? And it be like that. It be yeah, like that. Them, I ain't mad at them, but I'm asking. Yeah. Actually, it strong. You get what I'm saying? So yep. it is what it is. It be like that. It be like that. All right, so moving further along, you said eventually you ended up in the streets. So Correct. when you started What's chilling that? outside, when you started chilling outside, you lived in a predominantly crip neighborhood. Mm-mm, nah, every neighborhood I actually moved to before I actually turned on um, actual crip, it was always blood. You get what I'm saying? Coney Island, I'm originally from as a blood neighborhood. Okay, so what, so was it... I was the only one out there that was actually... Okay. You know what I'm saying? So was it, was it a specific, like, 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 the way that the, the Lokes moved that drew you more to that side? Because, you know, you could have easily went the other way and went right. Well, let me just say this then, because now you're getting into the detail of on why I became friends. During the time when, at one point in the time when I was young going to school and all that, when my pops really didn't give a fuck about me or really couldn't take care of me or family wasn't taking care of me, I got motherfuckers that's from the hood that seen, seen the shit that I go through. You get what I'm saying? These motherfuckers looking out for me, giving me clothes off their back, taking care of me, doing shit that my family not doing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. They doing everything that my family supposed to be doing. Reminds me. They don't really know me like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But they doing these things for me. So I took it as like, shit. So it's like I took it as a blessing. I ain't actually chose me, bro. Yeah, because because you know they was, they were like, showing yeah. you love. They were showing you love, real love. You get what I'm saying? But further, fast going on, later down the line, it was a, to where I got to a situation where I wanted to get in. I think I was in a juvenile spot for that time when Spafford was Spafford in the Bronx. Yeah, I got to a situation I wanted to be in jump by some blood niggas in there. Guess who come to my rescue? Crap niggas. I don't even know, never seen before. But it's just every time I get to some shit or a situation to hurt me, the crip niggas is always there. Coincidentally, I don't know how the shit happened, but they're always there. You get what I'm saying? So one day it got to the point where I put in enough work when I was in juvenile to where they asked me to be a part of the shit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I denied the shit due to the fact that my I was telling you about I was around the older and they were telling me you can't be crip uh, because of your age is too young. So I denied it when I was there. Then, when I hit the, the um, island, that's when I originally became hip hop I was under a miscellaneous nigga. So I wound up dropping my set, and then I wound up turning officially crip when I came back home. I bet, bet, bet. I, first of all, you, you being a crip, I don't know why, because I never heard this with bloods before. And I'm gonna say, unfortunately, because I'm from an area where it's predominantly bloods. Yeah, I respect right, the right, fact right. that they told you, hey, listen, you too young to get put on right now. Yeah, that's a fact. I respect yeah, that. that this was too, though, Cause they didn't want to corrupt you. They didn't want to corrupt you when you real young. Even though, even though they you know, already knew I was in the streets doing my own thing. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, real niggas do real shit, bro. They, they, yeah, they yeah I respect like, that. I, I respect nigga, that. Do what you do. You're not breaking your home, and that's that. You get what I'm saying? So they was really on my ass about it. All right, so so moving on a little bit more now. You said that when when you got to the island, you officially got put on. Yeah. All right. So so was it was it a uh, was it a situation where somebody who had the clout just vouched for you and you was on, or did you have to fight? Well, you know, word travel from juvenile and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those motherfuckers Facts. that was already there. Facts. That was on the island. You get what I'm saying? So niggas with the word travel was nothing. Yeah, Mark, yeah. If you got it, if you got enough time. respect, if you got enough respect, they won't make you do the dance. Uh, 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 of course, I was never with that shit. You get what I'm saying? Of course. Yeah. But yeah. I ain't gonna sit here in front. Remember, I don't know if you see my other interview, but I did say my very first time to the island, I was going through it because I didn't know how the island was ran. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. Of course, I was going through it. Of course, I was getting lined up. Hitting me left and right. I ain't gonna cap. I ain't gonna say it front like I was. It happens, man. You know they they smoked my boots when I first got there too, man. I had to I had to learn. I had to take my lumps before I started giving. Nah, them. but niggas be lying. Talking about like, yeah, I had to crib this that bro. They lying, the island, bro. And if you're not knowing this your first time there, bro, you're not about to tell me that you ain't had no problems at all, bro. You're fucking lying, bro. Yeah, you know that's a lie, big cat. 
You get what I'm saying? But never, oh no, I was getting smoked the first time I went there, so I ain't gonna lie. 